Hello, I am that British guy, and welcome to my rebooking video for Jinder Mahal's WWE title run. Now, it's pretty much universally agreed that Jinder Mahal's title run in 2017 was a complete disaster. He was brought over from Raw to SmackDown Live in the Superstar Shake-Up. He was put straight into a number one contenders match and won that, and then won the title in his first attempt at Backlash over Randy Orton. He then went into a bit of a feud with Randy Orton and because of drafting in the Bollywood Boys from NXT who were renamed the Singh Brothers, he basically kept getting distraction wins every single pay-per-view. This then moved on to a couple of wins over Shinsuke Nakamura around uh, SummerSlam and just after that. And he then dropped the title to AJ Styles in Manchester. And this was after he had challenged Brock Lesnar to a champion versus champion match at Survivor Series. That match was obviously changed to AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar, thankfully, which was a much better match than... I'm sure a Lesnar-Mahal match would have been. He then lost his rematch at Clash of Champions. And in between those title matches, he went off to the India Tour and lost to Triple H. And it was believed at the beginning of the year that really the only reason that Mahal was given the title was to help WWE branch into the India market. They thought that giving him the title would help boost sales of merchandise and network subscriptions over there, and it didn't really work. They also had to cancel one of the days in India and move it over to Abu Dhabi because ticket sales were quite poor for the India tour show. And basically, it was just a mess, really. It was a PR stunt that kind of went pretty bad and I am going to try to book things a little bit differently to hopefully elevate Mahal firstly in the eyes of the fans because they didn't like the fact that he went from jobber to champion like that which I can understand also because of this AJ Styles and Kevin Owens were stuck in a horrible feud over the US title which although the feud itself wasn't great felt a bit weird that they were fighting over the sort of lower tier title while Mahal was facing top stars for the WWE title so I want to try and avoid that and also hopefully the way this has been rebooked will boost WWE in the eyes of the India market they will then be able to get more network subscription the tour will be able to be over the two days as it was originally intended and Mahal will still become WWE Champion. I want to put that out here now. I'm not rebooking this by just not having him as champion. I'm just going to rebook how he gets to winning the title and how he is seen in the eyes of the fans. So here we go. Right, first off, after WrestleMania, we still have the Superstar Shake-Up. Kevin Owens still comes over to SmackDown Live essentially in exchange for The Miz, so we lose the Intercontinental title, but we gain the US title, and because of Kevin Owens losing the Universal title match to Goldberg, and then going into that program with Chris Jericho, and taking the US title off of him at WrestleMania, he basically wants his World Championship rematch, and he knows he can't get the Universal title because he's on the wrong show now, so he demands a title match for the WWE title, which obviously Randy Orton won at WrestleMania over Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt has now gone over to Raw. So he's kind of out of the picture. And Daniel Bryan, he kind of sees where Kevin Owens is coming from, um, but he he feels like it's a bit unfair if he just gives him this title match. He essentially could have become a dual champion. Kevin Owens really explaining that the only reason he wanted to take the US title from Jericho was to kind of stick it to Jericho. So he agrees to drop the US title in exchange for a shot at the WWE title, so he completely vacates the US title. 
So at Backlash, we will have Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens for the WWE title, and we currently have no US title. And I think you can probably see where we're going with this. The following week, there is the Six Pack Challenge. Basically, the match that they had for the WWE number one contenders match. And in that, we have Mojo Rawley, Dolph Ziggler, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, Sami Zayn, and Jinder Mahal. And it is agreed that the winner of this match will face Chris Jericho, who is still entitled to his rematch. And that match will actually take place at Payback. Because Jericho is a Raw superstar, he wants his rematch as soon as possible. Payback is a Raw pay-per-view, so we're going to have this match at Payback. And admittedly, that is a bit messy, but it did get a little bit confusing and messy around this time anyway in the WWE. So we're just going to have a SmackDown superstar face Chris Jericho at Payback for the United States Championship. And... Jinder Mahal wins this six-pack challenge, as he did. He then goes on to payback to face Chris Jericho for the vacant United States Championship. And at payback, Jinder Mahal wins over Chris Jericho. He doesn't get any help from the Singh brothers. There's no interference there. It's a nice, clean victory over somebody who will be seen as a WWE legend in a few years' time multiple world champion, multiple mid-tier and tag team champion as well, and hopefully this will solidify Jinder Mahal as a realistic mid-tier champion with this clean victory over somebody as big as Chris Jericho. Now, obviously, Chris Jericho will go off and do his tours with Fozzy, so that kind of ends that before it even really begins. He doesn't get dragged into the AJ Styles and Kevin Owens business either. So we have Jinder Mahal as the United States Champion at the end of Payback. Now two days later on Smackdown Live, Jinder Mahal comes out without his United States Championship and everyone's a little bit confused. And he decides to hold a massive celebration like the Indian celebration that he had when he won the WWE title. We have that here. And during this celebration, he is presented with a brand new title belt. He has basically rechristened the United States Championship, the Indian Championship. And although he is a heel, and he is obviously a foreign heel, what I don't want to do is the traditional foreign heel, ooh, America bad, you bad Americans, boo, 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 my country's better than America because it's so 1980s, it's so tired now, and that's what they try to do with him, and it is awful. So what I want to try and do is basically elevate him as an Indian patriot. Still with heelish tendencies, but ideally, kind of like how Bret Hart was treated in the mid to late 90s, where he was a face in Canada, or pretty much outside of America, but the American crowd viewed him very much as a heel, which is obviously where he's going to feature more so. Because I still want to keep him as a heel, but want to kind of have him celebrated in India. So as much as possible, we have Indian patriotism over any kind of acknowledgement that he is in the United States, working for a United States company. So rechristening the title will kind of go a big way towards that. Also, it creates a lovely bit of merchandise that probably will only be purchased by an Indian audience. Now, in and amongst all of this, uh, there's still a bit of tension between Jinder Mahal and Mojo Rawley that spilled over from the WrestleMania Battle Royal sort of final moments where Rawley managed to beat Jinder Mahal. And obviously, Jinder Mahal was able to beat Mojo Rawley, amongst others, in the six-pack challenge to get a United States title shot. So we kind of finish that feud off for Backlash. We have Mojo Rawley go up against Jinder Mahal for now the Indian title. 
basically with Mojo's emphasis being on rechristening this the United States title, and he's disgusted at what Jinder has done to that title. And this is then at Backlash where we first see the Singh brothers. They come out, there's a little bit of a distraction, but we still get a cleanish victory for Jinder Mahal. He retains the Indian title, and that kind of draws a line under the feud with Mojo Rawley. And what we see later in the night as well is that title match between Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, and they kind of go into a bit of a program themselves. Owens gets a bit whiny, almost like Christian was with Randy Orton a few years back on SmackDown with the whole one more match thing. Not quite as obvious as that, but along those sorts of lines, just to keep that feud going um, without having to kind of pass the title backwards and forwards and have to have rematch after rematch after rematch. And this will hopefully still instill that... um, awkwardness and resentment between Kevin Owens and the authority figures, specifically Shane McMahon, because I don't want to completely rewrite all of SmackDown's booking for the entire year. Now, after this, we have Jinder Mahal compete against Ty Dillinger in a qualifying match for the Money in the Bank ladder match, and he wins that and goes on to Money in the Bank to compete in that ladder match, and he competes alongside... AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, and Baron Corbin. And we can still have Baron Corbin win the briefcase in this match as normal. Again, as I said, I don't want to completely change all of SmackDown's bookings, so we can have that here. And in the process of the match, Mahal and Zayn pretty much take each other out and that's why neither one of those are able to win the match. Also at Money in the Bank, probably on the pre-show, we will be able to have the Hype Bros where Zack Ryder has come back to form that team with Mojo Rawley and they will go up against the Singh Brothers because I want to actually get the Singh Brothers competing in matches as well. I don't want this to be completely all about Jinder Mahal. And I want the Singh brothers to kind of establish themselves as well. And they beat the Hype Bros in this match, probably on the pre-show. And again, Orton manages to beat Kevin Owens for the WWE title. So, on SmackDown Live, a couple of days later, Mahal basically lays into Sami Zayn. He blames him for Jinder Mahal not winning the briefcase because he wanted to cash that in tonight and become a dual champion. Sami Zayn then comes out and basically says, look, if you've got a problem with me, face me in the ring, stop whining about it. Mahal then bails and Zayn gets set upon by the Singh brothers. This then leads to Sami Zayn beating both of the Singh brothers in matches in the coming weeks. And we set up a title match at Battleground between Jinder Mahal and Sami Zayn for the Indian title. And again, Jinder Mahal is able to overcome his challenger and retain his title. Again, I want to keep these victories as clean as possible. Yes, you can have a bit of Singh shenanigans, but what we ended up getting month after month was Singh's distraction on, say, Randy Orton or Shinsuke Nakamura. Jinder Mahal would then come up behind them, hit them with the colossus, and then pin them to win. I want to avoid that as much as possible. I don't mind them getting involved every now and then because obviously it's standard sort of heel tactics. But ultimately, Jinder Mahal's wins need to be relatively, if not completely, clean. And in terms of the WWE title picture, I want to kind of mix it up a bit. Kevin Owens is still going off on one, so he's not involved in this match or shouldn't be involved. And it's Orton going up against AJ Styles, who isn't completely face at this point. I know he was in the normal timeline, but he's sort of more of a tweener. Um, He's still got that bit of arrogance about him. And because of Kevin Owens, he basically costs AJ Styles this match. And Orton is able to overcome AJ Styles, basically because Owens wants to be the one to beat Orton, because he feels hard done by and cheated, in his words, that uh, he hasn't been able to beat Randy Orton yet. 
Now, on the SmackDown after Battleground, Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger come out and basically reprimand Jinder Mahal for the way he has been defending his Indian title, getting the Sings involved wherever he can. Again, as I said, hopefully he gets relatively clean wins, but they have been sort of causing distractions or attacking the opponent on the outside when the ref has been distracted, things like that. So they have been getting involved. So Zayn and Dillinger do have genuine reason to have this grievance. Um, so obviously Ty lost the qualifying match and Zayn lost a title match. And basically they call out Mahal and want him to defend his title honourably. He, as he is responding to these at the rampway, distracts them because they're sort of watching him. And the Singh brothers come out of nowhere and beat down on both Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger. And Mahal agrees to defend his title at SummerSlam, but only if they are able to beat both him and the Singh brothers that night in a handicap match, a two on three handicap match. And basically what we have here is during that match, Zayn and Dillinger managed to sort of take out Jinder Mahal and pin one of the Singh brothers. So we're kind of protecting Mahal to a certain extent. He doesn't eat the pin and the reason he can't break the pin up when it is occurring is because he gets beaten up quite badly on the outside of the ring. And so Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger are able to beat both of the Singh brothers and pin one of them. So Jinder Mahal is then going to have to defend his title at SummerSlam. Now the following week, in order to determine who he will face, Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger have a one-on-one -on -one match. And the winner of that will face Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam and usual sort of goings on with uh, a heel champion. We have the interference, we throw the match out, and it is then later decided that Jinder Mahal will have to face both Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger in a triple threat match. And it is also decided that there must be no interference at all from the Singh brothers. They are banned from ringside. If they come down to the ring at any point and get involved in any way, Jinder will be stripped of his title, so he must defend his title in a triple threat on his own. So at SummerSlam, we have the match Jinder Mahal versus Sami Zayn versus Ty Dillinger, and he is able to overcome both of those cleanly. He gives both of them a colossus towards the end and pins Ty Dillinger to retain his title and later on in that night AJ Styles manages to win the WWE title from Randy Orton and Randy Orton basically takes exception to this and goes completely mad attacking Styles after the match effectively confirming a double turn this will hopefully put AJ Styles over completely as a face even though the crowd are sort of wanting to cheer him anyway um, so that sorts that out and because of Randy's attack in a very very brutal manner that kind of paints him more as a heel now he wants to be a heel character anyway and to be honest is much more interesting as a heel so once we have got the title off of him we are then able to present him as a heel character Basically, the only reason that he was staying face as long as he was was because he was going up against Kevin Owens, who is quite obviously a heel character, and we needed that face-heel dynamic. So, at the end of SummerSlam, we have Jinder Mahal still as the Indian champion, and we have a face AJ Styles as WWE champion. Now, on the SmackDown after SummerSlam, Jinder Mahal basically calls out new competition, and he is met by a debuting Bobby Roode. And they have a few bits of back and forth, maybe commentating on each other's matches, trying to distract each other in their matches, and it is set for Hell in a Cell, 
Bobby Roode versus Jinder Mahal for the title. And Jinder is starting to get a bit more and more desperate to retain his title and he narrowly escapes with it. One or two times where Bobby Roode hits the glorious DDT and Jinder Mahal only really manages to keep hold of the title because the Singh brothers drag him out of the ring, thus nullifying any pinfall attempt. So he just manages to keep hold of his title at Hell in a Cell. Then, as planned, at Survivor Series, we have all of our champion versus champion matches. We are able to still get AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. And instead of The Miz versus Baron Corbin, we have The Miz versus Jinder Mahal. And you can have quite a few bits of goings on with The Miz Taraj and The Singh Brothers in sort of the early goings of the match and the referee basically ejects all four men so it is then a one-on-one -on -one match now in the actual timeline the Miz beat Baron Corbin ideally I would like Jinder Mahal to beat the Miz here because again that is another decent victory without then any outside interference it's a clean victory in the end over a very, very credible champion, arguably one of the best intercontinental champions of recent years. He is a former WWE champion and WrestleMania main eventer. So again, it's a decent, credible champion that Jinder Mahal is beating here. But depending on how they want to weigh up victories and losses for either brand, you might have to have The Miz win here. Um, it's not ideal, but at least Jinder manages to keep hold of his title and The Miz can still beat him using quite heelish tendencies if necessary to almost steal a victory from Jinder Mahal. But ideally I would like Jinder to win this match. The Smackdown after Survivor Series, it is announced that Bobby Roode will get another chance at the title against Jinder Mahal and this will take place at Starcade. Basically because of Jinder's actions at Hell in a Cell and the fact that Bobby Roode should have been given a fair fight, he is given another chance to win the title and that will happen at Starcade. And at Starcade, Bobby Roode does in fact win the title. He pins Jinder Mahal 1-2-3. After the match, he leaves the Indian title with the referee and walks off without it, which kind of creates a little bit of confusion with the commentary. They're not really sure what's going on. Is he the champion? Has he vacated it? What's going on? So the following SmackDown Live, Bobby Roode comes out. He's got the robe on and everything. He walks out, gets into the ring, opens his robe and reveals the original United States Championship, the belt that basically Jinder Mahal had replaced with his Indian title. Bobby Roode has revived this title after a few months out. And Jinder Mahal, not wanting to wait until any pay-per-views, he comes out and demands his rematch for his Indian title. He keeps calling it the Indian title, not the United States. Bobby Roode accepts and the main event for that night is the rematch for the United States slash Indian title, depending on who is speaking, really. And Bobby Roode retains the title. He is your new United States champion. Now, as a little side note, most of the summer, the WWE.com and their Twitter feeds and YouTube and commentary and everything like that have been playing up the fact that Jinder Mahal will be on the India tour. He will be taking the Indian title over to India and defending it there. Basically to just try and advertise this tour as much as possible. Make it seem as big as possible. This hometown, in inverted commas, boy is coming home with the Indian title and basically showing it to all of the crowd there and defending it in his home country of India, even though he's Canadian. Now, once he has lost the Indian title and lost the rematch, this will shift slightly and basically they're saying that he will be facing the WWE champion AJ Styles on the India tour 
for the WWE Championship. So instead of defending the Indian title, he will be facing the WWE Champion for the main title. And obviously this happens on the 8th and the 9th of December. So we have two title matches. On the 8th of December, AJ Styles manages to retain his title against Jinder Mahal. And so we have the second match on the 9th of December. And in this match, Jinder Mahal in India wins the WWE Championship to hopefully massive celebration from the crowd. If he's done his job properly and built up enough of this Indian patriotism um, and he's seen as this hometown hero, even though AJ Styles is as revered as he is by the majority of the crowds, hopefully Jinder Mahal will still get a massive pop for winning the main title in his home country of India, even though he's Canadian. And again, it is very, very important that this is a clean victory. Yes, the things can be out there. Yes, they can be having sort of verbal one-upsmanship with AJ Styles or the ref, but Jinder must win this clean. And then at Clash of Champions, he successfully defends his title against AJ Styles and closes out 2017 as the WWE Champion. Now, what you do with him from there is pretty much up to... WWE. They initially wanted John Cena to beat him. That could still happen. You could do that ideally not as early as the Royal Rumble. If you can drag it out to WrestleMania, that gives Jinder Mahal a massive WrestleMania moment and a huge reason for more of the Indian market to get the network to see Jinder Mahal on the main stage at WrestleMania defending his title against John Cena. I think that would be the icing on the cake. John Cena can then take the title from Jinder Mahal after a few months of being the champion. John Cena then obviously becomes the 17-time champion, which it seems like they're wanting to do with him anyway. Um, and that kind of writes a line under that. Hopefully then Jinder Mahal feels like he deserves this championship match because of what he's done with the lower tier championship and because he is playing up the Indian patriotism rather than boo America, you don't get the same heel foreign shtick that you get all the time with other people for the last about 30 years. So there we go. That is how I would have booked Jinder Mahal's run to the WWE title in 2017. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you have any other booking videos that you would like me to do, please let me know in the comments. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.